just heard documents the interaction had on September 11th, 2012, outside a St. Clair, Missouri gas station between Jeffrey Winehouse and employees of the Missouri State Highway Patrol, Troop I. I encourage you to check out coplock.org slash Jeffrey Winehouse for complete information about this incident. The audio was shared with Coplock from an anonymous source, and the reason it's being shared is to help introduce into the situation some objective documentation about how it unfolded, especially because uh, what we can hear from the audio uh, conflicts with the press release, with the statements issued by the shooters uh, and the investigators who are at Missouri State Highway Patrol, Troop I and Troop C, respectively. Some background, Jeffrey uh, had long had a newsletter and then a YouTube channel called Bulletin Man uh, through which he shared some of his thoughts on the size and scope of government and what he saw as uh, rights violations being committed uh, and corruption being done by public servants. And on August 16th of 2012, he made a video called Party, The Party's Over. The America that I grew up in is long gone now. The good news is it can be restored, and it can be restored peacefully if the powers that be just simply walk away. On August 22nd, about a week later, he was visited at his home by some Missouri State Patrol employees who wanted to take his computers. They wanted to steal his property because they said, uh, based on the alleged threats directed at law enforcement and judicial officials. So that video is linked to... Uh, in the description, and I encourage you to check it out for yourself. Don't just take my word. Don't just take the word of the people who claim authority over you and over Jeff um, and see for yourself. But uh, So anyway, when they showed up at his door on August 22nd, they claimed that they smelled marijuana. They asked to come inside. Jeffrey rightly denied them entry. Who wants a stranger who claims the legitimate right over you to uh, come into your house? But uh, So they got a piece of paper signed by their friend, which they called a warrant, came back, said they had the right to come in his house, took his property. They also found uh, some marijuana, allegedly, less than 35 grams. Fast forward a couple weeks later to September 11th, when the incident you already heard um, occurred. Jeffrey planned to meet these uh, Missouri State Patrol employees to, what he thought, recover his property, and instead that's not what happened. Um, a couple week, a couple days later, September 14th, the Missouri State Highway Patrol issued a press release. The text from that press release notes that Winehouse arrived and then exited his vehicle. The troopers observed a holstered pistol on Winehouse's side. The troopers issued verbal commands for Winehouse to move his hands away from his pistol. However, Winehouse unstrapped the holster and began to draw the weapon. Fearing for their safety, the troopers fired and struck Winehouse. Is that the interaction, is that the dialogue that we heard disclosed from the audio at the beginning of this video? And this is Jeffrey's encounter with the um, Missouri Highway Patrol to get his computers back. What's going on, Yeah, how are you? Why well, I got the gun? Why you got the gun? From what I understand, uh, it may be a surprise to the shooters and their comrades that this audio even exists. Uh, in fact, uh, one of Winehouse's friends noted after uh, the interaction, he said, Jeff wasn't stupid. He called one of us and recorded the incident as it happened. So again, this just shows the, the power of creating an objective documentation of interactions with people who claim a legitimate right to use force against you because right now uh, it's Jeff's word against these other folks who have uh, a lot more resources to levy upon him and a lot easier time steering the conversation through the mainstream media which just parrots uh, what they want 
them to say they don't question anything. Uh, they just parrot and peddle uh, these misinformations and distortions and omissions put forth. So again, what happened uh, since then? Jeff, Jeff re fortunately later recovered, and um, he was due to have a bond hearing on November 29th. He wanted to see if his bond, which is essentially a ransom that restricts his freedom of movement, he wanted to see if that could be reduced from the current level at of $50,000. But instead, the day prior to that bond hearing on November 28th, there was a grand jury indictment. So this was just some legal land maneuver to prevent Jeffrey from uh, having a freedom of movement and uh, you know, pursuing his own happiness. And that grand jury, they, they not only um, didn't lessen the bond amount from $50,000, but they increased it 500% to a quarter million dollars. And they, they indicted him on eight charges in total. Uh, the marijuana that was mentioned earlier, two count, two misdemeanor counts, but also six felonies, which include tampering with judicial officer, resisting, interfering with arrest for a felony, and then two counts each of armed criminal action and assault or attempted assault against a law enforcement officer. So I, the reason I guess I've been so vocal and adamant about making sure there's a, some attention paid to Jeff's situation is because I don't see much else of it coming out uh, from the area, from local media, from friends, even from Central Missouri Cop Block, um, a group that I'm told he was uh, loosely associated with. So I think it's imperative that we stand up for each other. You know, I've watched some of his videos. I don't necessarily agree 100% with all his sentiments, his statements, his motivations. But from what I know, he didn't do anything violent. Um, you know, he, there was no reason he should have been shot. Uh, that come, that's the bottom line. And the way this has since been handled, the, um, the non-communication that has come from uh, those who claim to protect folks in that area. Again, uh, Jeff was shot by a couple as of yet unnamed employees of Troop I of Missouri State Highway Patrol. And who did the investigation about this incident? Some of their colleagues down the road at Troop C for Missouri State Highway Patrol. Is that is that impartial? Is that going to bring about a just conclusion? I, I don't think so. You know, it's, it's much more likely that he's going to get railroaded, that he may be thrown in a cage for decades if nobody stands up for him and nobody stands up with him. And, you know, we see this not just in his situation, but in any situation, uh, where these folks claim a legitimate right to initiate force. Uh, so it's all the more imperative, so it's all the more important that we stand up when these types of things happen, that we speak out, you know, when our rights are transgressed upon, and that we do a good job documenting, disseminating, um, sharing, and supporting each other. Because I, I do think there are more good people in the world, but if we uh, sit idly by, whether out of apathy or, an, or fear, and let some folks uh, bully others, it's not going to lead to a good conclusion. So again, I appreciate your time. Check out copblock.org slash Jeffrey Winehouse. Get in touch with me at Pete at copblock.org with any info or tips you have on the situation. And um, I just want to mention that I will soon be on the road as part of a copblock tour, and I will be in uh, the area where Jeff was shot and plan to follow up uh, in person. So if anybody is in that area and wants to connect, I encourage you to uh, check out copblock.org slash tour. There's a stop in central Missouri indicated in early February, and I hope we can together get some accountability.